Black Raspberry Radio, we live and direct, and I'm so sorry for last week for not coming because my mama is in fucking town, and even if my mother is the only one that's watching this show right now, I'm good. So to all, all the rest of you niggas in Brownsville that ain't watching, I don't even give a fuck no more. I don't care. My mama watching. My mama's up from down south, and she here. And um, this is dedicated to you, mama. And I'm gonna say this. Um. This planet got about like 5.2 billion people on the planet, but if 1 billion people check in, Ma, they're going to know that I love you, Ma. I really do. And um, I'm sorry for fucking up. And I, I'm, I'm about as live to the planet Earth right now. I mean, it's not on ABC. It's not on Fox. It's not on CBS. And it's not on CNN. And it's not on MSNBC or whatever other alphabet that you have out there. Um... I want to give you thanks, and I want to say this. I'm so sorry. I'm 46 years old, and since the age of 18, not listening to you and not doing what the fuck I was supposed to do right. And maybe I should have left to go to Virginia Union to go to college when I graduated. Or maybe I should have, you know, went into the Army, but, you know, I think that I should have left Brownsville. I, 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 I should have just packed my shit up and left. Other than me working at this job in the city for 21 years, you know, I'm glad that you installed that in me that, nigga, you is not going to sit your fat ass around here and not do anything. You're going to get up and you go to work. So, you know, I want to give a shout out for you and grandma. You know, in 1976, I came up into Brownsville and we was getting ready to move into Marcus Garvey Projects or we was going to move into Brownsville Projects or we was going to get ready to move into 10 a.m. Boy or we was getting ready to move into Atlantic Towers. And you was walking past and you had some money in your pocket and it was a for sale sign for a house. And I'm going to say this. A lot of you people in Browns will always say, you know that, you know, you, you come from something privileged. No. My mom took $300 and bought the fucking house. This is 1976. She said, I'm not taking, she, she just didn't want to go over there and fill out the application to go there. And we stayed in this house until my mama built that shit up. From 76 all the way to 2008, 2009, that house was bookshelved, meaning that it could have been a lot of mold. It could have been asbestos in those pipes. But before my mother had left to go down south, she had got that house rebuilt. You know what I'm saying? She said, now, now, nigga, you going to pay for it. So that's what I'm doing. You know, the payments might be late sometimes, mom, but that payment is on debt because I ain't going to fuck up your money. I fuck up everybody else's money, but I ain't going to fuck up your money because you know what? I still have that fear of you and grandma, like I said, y'all looking at me through the corner of your eye. You know, I could look at a nigga, maybe I have to look at somebody, with, if they have a gun pointed at my face, I have to look down the barrel with a gun, but I just cannot bear to look my mother looking at, me, looking at me from the corner of her eye like, nigga, you crazy like she did this morning. It's like, you know what, my mother is 66 years old and... You know, you're getting old, and it's like, I got to do something. You know what I'm saying? I got to do, do do something. It's like, I'm still a 46-year-old man, but I'm still your baby boy. I'm the baby from two older sisters that I can honestly say that came up in Brownsville that did not get slapped up. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that I I, I had ch 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 sisters that wasn't on drugs or wasn't the hoe on the block. That you know they was very well respected, and 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 the one thing about my sisters, my sisters always fuck with the enforcers of the crew. So it was always an AK-47 or Uwat from a Caribbean nigga. Like I said, I'm from Brownsville, and the '90s is right there, and Wingate High School is over there. But you know, that's enough of that. As we go jump into my, you know, my show. Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom, for bringing me here. But I'm sorry for the bullshit that I, you know, that I um. There's a couple of um, issues that I have. Um, let me put my bullets, as they say. And I'm going to run these bullets down. Money will still circulate. What do I mean by that? Donald Trump and I guess the Federal Reserve is not releasing the Harriet Tubman fucking face on the $20 bill. The $20 bill is still going to fucking, it's, it's still going to spin. Maybe some Lincolns may come back. Maybe some Washingtons may come back. Maybe some fucking slave owners may come back. The money's still going to spend the um, spend the same. You know what? I want to talk about. I'm, I'm going to talk about right quick. Um, to all that died from the bad boy death row. East Coast West Coast incident that happened years ago. It's like some of the stories that you know you hear on Vlad, and you know you hear Mob James and some of those people that was there with Shug Knight. Like a lot of people got killed. Over there, you know, maybe because it was a, just a negative energy that, you know, maybe that death row, you know, kind of, you know, brought out. Um, Suge, Suge Knight. No, you know, what? I want to let it be known with Suge Knight. You know, I, somebody has said, said something today on the, on, on Facebook. Um, nobody don't care about Suge Knight no more. And it was in reference to Mary J. Blige because I had gave a shout out to Mary J. Blige, but I had also threw Suge Knight in it. And it's like, well, what the fuck do Suge Knight got to do with Mary J. Blige? Suge Knight helped Mary J. Blige get her money back when that My Life album came out. And she didn't get no money from on What's the 411. It's not her fault, I guess, that she got beat out of her money. Though, that, that's the contract that you signed. You know, money had to run through Uptown. No, excuse me. Money had to run through MCA. Money had to run through Uptown. Money had to run through Bad Boy. Money had to run through Dope Fat. But it's like it's also to say, you didn't write none of those songs. I mean, you probably put some emphasis on some of the songs, but you didn't write a lot of those songs, I guess, to get the money that you were supposed to have get. But for some reason, Suge Knight got Mary J. Blige and Jody C. some money while I think that second album that, that, that was out that Jody C put, put out and Mary J. Blige's second album, um, the My Life album that came out. Um, I'm going to touch on Donald Trump not really giving a fuck about the democracy. And it's like, why do you say that? I'm going to shoot to the Central Park Five. They was exonerated. And I know I said this shit before. And it's like, you don't give a fuck that the court, you know what I'm saying, over... You know, over succeeded the, you know, whatever, how do we say that? They, they, they overturned it. And it's like, you, 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 you run shotgun. You sell a lot of weapons to anybody. It's like that. You don't go through the conquest. You act like a king. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you was watching the, um, the Game of Thrones. Brother, can I get a light? I keep watching the Game of Thrones. I keep fucking going back. Like, you know what I'm saying? I went through um, season one. I went through season one through eight. But it's like I done started it all over again because, you know, sometimes when you watch a TV show, you may miss, you may miss something on the show. Pardon me, people. Um, building, buildings being built and there are still homeless shelters. That shit is fucking crazy. Brown's room. It's 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 coming up. I mean, they are coming up with buildings crazy in Brownsville, where these play. You know what I'm saying? These shits was lots, and I'm happy that they being built. That these these places don't got to be lots, but why do we have still homeless shelters and a lot of buildings is getting built? It is it, it's 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 not making any sense. Um, I'm gonna shoot back to music. Puff Daddy. We mixing good beats to good lyrics. Nine four, nine five, nine six, nine seven. Those years a bad boy. Um I have said this too. Biggie Smalls Road to the Riches. And you know, it was a backstory that I had seen with um Puff Daddy talking about that. Puffy or Biggie or somebody that was, you know, down there while they, you know, 
the one of the beat makers, and they were saying how Puff Daddy, Puff Daddy wanted, didn't want Machine Gun Funk to be the lead single when Juicy came out, and it was like, yo, we need to go with Juicy. We don't need to go with that that. Because I think if Biggie Smalls would have come with Machine Gun Funk as the lead single, maybe Biggie would still been alive because he probably wouldn't have been a big rapper. It just wouldn't. Have, it just probably just wouldn't have happened. The Juicy just would have been a B side song on the end. You know, got some air, some air place, You know, some air spins on the radio, but it probably wouldn't. You know, Biggie probably wouldn't have blew, blew up. But I want to say that when 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 Biggie came out with that Road to the Richest tape. That was a tape that that's at that time when Suge Knight and Puff Daddy is cool. And it said that because you know what? If you listen to Ready, Ready to Die, the beginning of Ready to Die got, I think, Snoop Doggy Dogs when he's robbing the train. That's a Snoop Dogg sample. And the first song back in the days, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre's own voice is on that. And Suge Knight always said that he never charged Puff and Biggie for that. You know what I'm saying? So. Black Raspberry Radio, you know, um, like I said, you know, just jumping around on different subject, you know, different subjects tonight. Um, I'm gonna go with Donald Trump. I'm gonna jump back to Donald Trump. Um, we might be going to war real soon, and Donald Trump. I mean, not that we just may be going to war. Donald Trump said that if you want the United States army or you know uh, marines or navy or air force to be out there in this sea this mediterranean shit, just like that game of thrones shit in that sea over there in that that side of the planet if y'all don't want these oil tankers to blow the fuck up y'all need to pay us i think donald trump is popping that shit because the united states actually have almost like 200 years or maybe 300 years of oil in the ground where they really, really at this at this very moment, they really don't gotta have to pump no oil from over there in, in Saudi Arabia. But the United States has a reserve. They're just raping the planet of the rest of the reserves that's there, of the of of the earth's blood. Cause I think oil is earth's blood. We got a lot enough earth blood here in the United States that you saying that we got two to three hundred years of oil in the fucking ground. So, you know, once again, Donald Trump is putting, I guess, like a Suge Knight stranglehold on on the world, and um, it was a beef with um, 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 Iran shooting down a drone, and Donald Trump is like, "Wow, you know, this this drone was in international waters, it was in international airspace. She wasn't supposed to shoot my shit down. I guess I, I Iran got something because you playing, y'all really playing or." Russia saying like, yo, if the United States bring war, we're going to bring it with it. Well, what the fuck is my concern? Of course, nuclear, catastrophic, you know, and, and you know, that like that, 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 that road warrior type shit. The road warrior when everything is just, the seas done dried up and. No water and people are being scavengers and shit. It's like, damn, we about to take that shit there. And I'm going to tell you, I think that New York will be one of the first places to be hit. Why would New York get hit first? This is where all the money flows through. If you want to fuck up the country, just fuck up the money. I'm just saying. That's what Ben Laden had thought. You know what I'm saying? To really try to bring down capitalism at that time. Like, you know what? I ain't going to fight you. You know, you know. I, I, I guess straight up, I'm going to get you in a different way. And that's what happened. And look how many years it took for the world economy to get back, you know, back in stride. I mean, motherfuckers like Bloomberg gets played, paid rather than you win or lose on that stock market. As long as he's reporting it, you're paying him. So some people still was getting paid regardless of the recession, depression that we was having at that time, 2007, 2006, 2007, 2008, all the way into that, um, to that housing bubble. But it's like I don't I don't want no war. You know what I'm saying? I want to retire my fucking job and spend some of that fucking money. Y'all don't but I done bust my motherfucking ass at this fucking job all this time for some catastrophic bullshit that happened with two men or uh, the the Muslims and the Christians or the communists and the capitalists. You tell me ideology is gonna fuck around and destroy this fucking planet? You know you motherfuckers from up there in Europe. You know the motherfuckers that you know. 
Y'all got the earth in a fucking stranglehold, man, and it's 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 fucked up that you know we are about to see World War fucking three, and it's 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 just fucked up that I think that the money system the money system is just so crazy because Donald Trump said that you know what I'm freezing all y'all assets now I'm freezing everything now you ain't gonna get no money. Or you definitely ain't gonna get 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 certain goods because I remember it was one year when the Iranians that came over here for the uh the the the, the world um event at the United Nations they said they have this Iranian this Iranian people that got that diplomatic thing to come to the UN they was buying nothing but fucking Tylenol at the Dwayne Reeves because it was like they can't get fucking Tylenol over there in their country so it's like. I see how how the way Donald Trump is going to position shit. Like, you know what? I'm gonna hit y'all with goods, and I'm gonna hit y'all that you can't move whatever what kind of Iranian dollar over here on the stock market over here. Maybe you could do that shit over there in Europe because the euro. I, I remember a couple years people was popping all that shit about the euro. The dollar don't mean shit. I don't give a fuck how in debt those greenbacks are. I don't care. You can sell, you can get you some pussy, excuse me, ma'am. You can, you can have sex with an American dollar anywhere on the fucking planet. Anywhere. Holding the war anywhere. Long as you see Jefferson and Grant and the rest of those, you know what I'm saying, other than Ulysses, excuse me, because he did fight against slavery, so I'm, I'm, I'm a part of you, General Grant. But all the rest of those fucking slave masters that was on that shit, you can spend that dollar any. You can spend that dollar anywhere. And Jay-Z has a lot of those. Jay-Z has a lot of slave masters or currencies or artful pictures and owning his master recordings. And you have Rock Nation and you have property and investments in startup companies. Because I see Nas done, done caught up a, a, a couple of uh, startup companies where, you know, a lot of these big people, Amazon done threw a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm fucking with these startups. You know what I'm saying? I think it was what well, one was one of those internet cameras that you have at your home, bling, bing, some shit. One of those those, those startup companies. Um, we're gonna go to a break. Let me cue up this music. I'm gonna go to my man Michael Summers and cue him up. God damn it, get there. Me keep talking, because you know what, because I seen somewhere they said never have airspace while your ass is live. You better be saying something, even if it's gibber fucking jabber. We're going to go to 98 Bullshit by my man Michael Summers from Howard Projects. Send a shout out to my baby boy. You know, he's behind that great still gate. You know, y'all y'all already know, you know, sick ain't around right now. You know, he's on his vacay right now and um I'm keeping it going. I don't give a fuck how mad you are, nigga. I still love you and all that other shit, you know. I I send you some fucking money, yeah. Um what I wanna talk about, um relationships. Relationships that's horrible. And kids are involved. 
it's 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 a hor- it's a horrific drag to it you know and certain things need to just come to a fucking end before things come to an end whether i catch a heart attack or you catch a heart attack or anybody catch a heart attack when a man and a woman you know what i'm saying i don't give a fuck if you're rearing kids and i guess that you're staying in a relationship because of the kids it's like yo these kids is going to be old men one day and you're not going to want to stay in a relationship because your kids your kids is 25 years old they don't give a fuck if mom and dad is slapping ass in the room besides y'all motherfuckers gonna be too old to be slapping ass anyway take care of my kids my dad i'm going out tonight so those kind of things you know is is it, it just gets kind of tiring and you know you see when you see that things is not growing and things is never going to grow and you've been watering the same plant for a long time it's like you know you gotta pull that shit to an end because you get tired of well i'm going out to go cheat and then i'm gonna go go out to go cheat then you go out and go cheat then i go out and go cheat that shit gets it, it get tiring especially at this age at, at an older age not at this age but at an older age it just get you know it just get tiring um I see that Mary J. Blige, I'm gonna go back to Mary B. I see that she um accepted her award at the uh B E T Awards and I'm so happy that B E T gave recognition to Mary J. Blige because Mary J. Blige played uh uh, uh Puff Daddy, excuse me. Puff Daddy played a uh, a big music movement for New York City, which that's Ron G shit. You know what I'm saying? On those mixed tapes because I remember that, that I know I said this some some podcasts ago. When they mixed that Stephanie Mills something in the way she feel with that break beat. And that was like the beginning of really to have like real R&B music on a beat release. Not just a DJ taking the acapella from vinyls. Because back in the days when you used to buy the, um, the singles. The singles always had the instrumental and the singles always had the acapella. So you was, fu- you was playing around there. I, I have a lot of records in the basement you know what i'm saying not more or less like like my time or my records but my mother's records there's a lot and there's a lot of there's a lot of um even 45s in the basement on one side of the album like i said you got the instrumental and then you got the whole song you know depending on it but if you got that 12 inch single it was always that you know he was always able to play around with it and it's like when you know when puff daddy and andre harrell and jeff red and all of them collaborated and bringing maybe maybe Jay Blige to the forefront. That that gave room for everybody else to jump on that bandwagon, you know. Cause Jermaine Dupri, when he came, he put his own little spin. And then when Dallas Austin came with his shit, Dallas Austin put his little spin like with Monica, like this and like that. That's one of the songs that came out at that time. Or what's that dude? KG from um Naughty by Nature when he came out with Jeanne. Jane is 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 it's like that like Mary J Blige is that is that god the goddess of it SWV Jane Escape what was that bitch Lisa Lisa something Lisa Lisa Mona Lisa huh then you had Monifa and you had my girl Faith which you know Mary B, Mary B had got kind of mad because Puff Daddy couldn't take Mary J Blige away from uptown like that yeah you did the my life album because the my life album is is bad boy entertainment stamped through the hitman stevie J and chucky thomas and all those other um you know producers that the hit the hitman the hitman that's who P- puff Derry d dot angeletti you know what i'm saying that 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 those people that puff had put together at that time so it's like i thank god for puff for for, for that good damn music because puff you're gonna need a lifetime achieving the award yourself because i People always come and argue with me when I say, well, who runs this fucking city? Is this Jay-Z city or is this Puff city? I'm not talking about the money. You know what I'm saying? And Jay-Z, you got your own shit too. Don't get it fucked up. I'm from Brooklyn, Hove. You have shouted out Brownsville through volume one and said your shit because Brownsville niggas and Marcy niggas always had this little shit at, at the Marcy Day thing. I remember hearing it as a child. But it's just that Puff had Mary J. Blige and Biggie Smalls and Faith. But Biggie Smalls and Mary J. Like he did something really memorable. Hove, you're memorable. Like Rihanna, she's you know, you know, you came out with with, with, with Rihanna. She's the highest paid female. Okay, not, not that. 
Not that. I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about like somebody really making the, the like made a mark. Mary J. Blige made a fucking mark. She made a mark. And 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 she deserves that you know have that um that title of queen of R and B. But I'm gonna jump right quick when Suge Knight fucking nine four nine five nine six when he pressed Andre Harrell and to let her ass out that goddamn contract and like I said got her um you know some more money. Um, Central Park Five. I'm happy that the Central Park Five is getting out there. I, I don't want to say that they're getting a celebrity. I don't want to say that like that, but they deserve it. They got ass raped. A lot of people that was on that case got promotions. A lot of those cops got pushed up to high-ranking detectives. So, like Mike Sheenan, the one that the news reporter that just died, he retired as like like second, how do you say, first grade, second grade. He retired with a high pension. Bottom line, his shit was probably like six, seven, eight thousand, nine thousand dollars. Because detectives get like, if you first grade detective, you get almost like two hundred fucking thousand dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? You don't put in like forty, so you you getting sixty percent of your salary. So you know, a lot of people got paid. Like the um the prosecutor that was there, like she went on to sell books and this that this, but you know the pressure made her retire. At Columbia University, I guess whatever what law, law, law that you was teaching, you you got pressed because it's like you're telling people under the oath you must represent. I I I I I. But you had some innocent children. Those kids were babies. You know what I'm saying? And and, and at that time, I, we did like almost the same age. They was 14, 15 years old. I was I'm in high school. I'm in the 10th grade, 1989 when it happened. And like the brother has said, wild ding. They took us wild in as wild ding and coerced those those young men to, you know, make those statements and say that they did it and they and and and, and didn't do it. But it was a blessing that wherever one of those young men was at, the real person was the real person was in jail and said that I, I got something on me that I can't hold no more. And he was the one that was raping women on the east side of fucking Manhattan. He found God, found Jesus, whatever, what religion, whatever. He found God and had to come clean and gave the gave gave everything. And it falls back to Donald Trump. It's like, damn, Trump, you couldn't invite them baby boys to the White House and, and, and say in the name of just. I mean, you love the United States, but it's like, yo, that Aryan shit in you, Donald Trump, that shit is really real. It's like, we gave you a lot of praise in the 80s, you know what I'm saying? I always gave you praise with that Mike Tyson shit. A lot of rappers always gave you praise. A lot of rappers put put your name in fucking records, and it's like, he's standing to his fucking beliefs. Like, I don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? I really don't give a fuck. That you descendants, you know what I'm saying? It was one Latino dude, but the other ones, it's like, yo, you descendants of Dred Scott, you will never get due process of the fucking law. Somewhere, we're going we're gonna to let some of y'all get through, but some of y'all, you're just not going to give due process of the law. But you know what? I'm going I'm to flip that to say the Supreme Court just gave a, a um, they just overruled. A murder charge in Mississippi because in this, the, the, the prosecution in Mississippi took all the black jurors off the um case. So it was like that he presented to the Supreme Court that he didn't get a fair trial. And, the, and a conservative Supreme Court, I think it, it, they voted 7-2, a conservative Supreme Court overturned it. So it's like, it also now, when I jump back to a lawyer, it's like, yo, you got to go up in there and represent your shit within those words. As they say, the, the, the framers of the Constitution, they put the frame there, but what picture that you going to paint? Like when Johnny Cochran represented O.J. Simpson, he put there, uh, 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 O.J. will not get be trialed fairly in Brentwood. He would not get trialed up there. He's not within the juror of his own peer. So they took that shit down to Compton and L.A. and Watts. You know what I'm saying? Which those, but I, I think O.J. did. I think O.J. killed that lady in the heat of fucking uh, passion. And like I said, that's where relationships get fucked up at. Where a man could stab a bitch up or a woman could stab a man up in, in that anger because they said that O.J. Simpson had seen her having sex with a man on his fucking couch. And enraged this fucking man. 
but she also was fucking around with some cocaine. Getting a lot of cocaine, a lot, straight from the fucking Columbia, straight from the source, not even stepped on, just squeezed out of the fucking plant with some salt on that shit, and she owed a fucking bill. But OJ did have a cut on his hand, and Johnny Cochran said that you have a, a, a racist fucking, a racist um, um, cop on the case who's known to not like black people. So he brought that reasonable doubt, which that black jury was like, fuck that, we're going to free OJ. But back in Brentwood during the civil trial, those white folks said that you owe $33 million. So, you know, OJ kind of went into, um, you know, that, that's enough of OJ. But I can honestly say that, you know, um, sometimes if, if, if you have that right lawyer or you have that constitutional lawyer, not the motherfucker that's just going to take your money on your case. Not the legal aid, you know what I'm saying, that's just going to represent you to take, you know, take his case. Because he's going to get paid. He's, he's a city, he's a state, and he's a federal employee. He has a, a crazy long fucking caseload. But a lot of politicians should also say that, you know what, we need to find the right legal aids to give the right fight in the court. Ones that's going to represent the Constitution, not just you copping the fuck out, but you don't want to dance sometimes with some of these cases. Like I have heard people say, son, don't dance with them. If niggas come at a low bull number and you know you did that shit, take that shit. Take it. Don't play with them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a couple of my friends, I can honestly say, some of those motherfuckers took shit to trial and some niggas is just coming home. Some, you know what I'm saying? 20 years. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I got a, a, a friend that's coming home doing a, a, a robbery, but he was known for doing robberies. He got 20 years. He took the shit to trial when he was like, yo, just take seven. Like, nah, I'm going to take the shit to trial because they ain't find nothing on me. And they came back with some kind of ruler and the judge like, nah, I'm over succeeding this. This is your MO. You've been robbing people since you was 14, 15 years old. I'm looking at your rap sheet, which you're not supposed to look at it, but judge was like, that's your MO. You know what I'm saying? Um... This is the Black Raspberry Show, and um, it might be a change to the name of uh, Black Raspberry. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, might, I might be going into a different direction of the show, and um, not that a different direction without my baby boy Reg, but I think that we're gonna we we gonna leave Black Raspberry alone because I always bring. You know what I'm saying me and my son, we go through our shit. But I always bring my son along for the ride, or rather, he bring me along for the ride. So it's just the name is 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 it's on to the next. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You know some you know some shit like that. Like how the way Wu Tang had Razor Sharp, they had Wu Tang Productions, and you had Bobby Digital. It's it's just you know trying to go along and and, and start something. You you know the faces, you know the movement still because you always had sh entertainment and you always had Brownsville America. I just went with Black Raspberry because it was a script, you know, that I, I, I wrote. A script that I included my mother. I included you in that script, Ma. I know you're watching this right now. You should be watching this right now, eating your cakes, your devil dogs, and your Lay's potato chips, Ma, at this very minute because my mother watches this show when it's orange, I just got off, my, off the phone with my cousin, which his ass is on parole. Not parole, he's in there trying to get a fucking appeal. And I spoke to my mother. She said, am I going, are you going on the show? Is the store going to be closed across the street? I'm like, mom, the store closed like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. You got to hurry up and get your devil dogs and your ladies' potato chips so you can sit, you know, and use my Wi-Fi and um, look at me <laughs> through the show. We're going to go into one more song because, you know, let me find something for the people. You know, like I said, you never keep your airspace, but we got we got one right here. Here we go. What you gonna do? Faggot ass, punk ass, pussy ass, bitch ass, nigga! You got a problem with that nigga? <laughs> Open up the cage and let the beast out Neck go chilly, so I bought the heat out At the arena, 10 shows down At the party, VIP taking hoes down Betting wars, Death Jam, Motown Word is, 
I'm in the scope, but in the scope. I've been through, been that shit, man. I've been a weapon. I am that kid. This is Lil's and I am legend. Bell peasant, crown fit the new king. On my way to the throne, walking with a new queen. Groove still, Lil's hit me for hire. Be on top and block dates past expired. Clock, clock, shells pop, body drop, solve situation. Duct tape, plastic bag, low acid cream made them. I wrote this last night something exclusive See me in something exclusive Beside me something exclusive Smoking something exclusive How about looking exclusive I'm that new nigga now something exclusive I wrote this last night something exclusive See me in something exclusive Beside me something exclusive Smoking something exclusive How about looking exclusive I'm that new nigga now something exclusive I come through something real stupid Inside's gray, outside real bluish You ain't heard of me, I see y'all watch the news This that real nigga shit, I'll come from YouTube I'm that new dude for the new school Tell Duke stop frontin' for why I shoot dude This that new groove, I'm that new snoop I make them jams like Russell, classical, lyrical I swear right hand on the Bible Same time left hand on the right fool Dead niggas can't defend life Besides, you can't breathe with a hole in your windpipe Disrespectful, I'm the one fucking my friend wife IQ, I see through you niggas with ten sights This the insight of a G-like Married to the game, but I see it with the street I wrote this last night something exclusive See me in something exclusive, beside me something exclusive How about looking exclusive? I'm that new nigga now, something exclusive I wrote this last night, something exclusive See me in something exclusive, beside me something exclusive Smoking something exclusive, how about looking exclusive I'm that new nigga now, something exclusive Drive-by music, realest shit I ever wrote Black and haze, realest shit I ever smoked AR-15, biggest gun I ever tote Biggie Smalls line, realest shit I ever quote I make scenes out of nightmare dreams With the 45, put you on lean like 555 Many men throw shots but none hit Many wear tight clothes, but that ain't gangsta shit He pussy I can't blame him, run with a bunch of dicks like Jenna Jameson When I'm raising the rings from my gun I shrivel your ass up like a raisin in the sun Two felonies, so I can't keep a job, nigga Fuck hustling, I'm going back to robbing niggas I wrote this last night something exclusive See me in something exclusive, beside me something exclusive Smoking something exclusive, how about looking exclusive I'm that new nigga now, something exclusive I wrote this last night something exclusive See me in something exclusive, beside me something exclusive Smoking something exclusive, how about looking exclusive I'm that new nigga now, something exclusive Yeah, 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 uh Only thing real niggas was 
respect is long dough, so connects come slow if you cop and just want O. Everybody wanna blow, but niggas don't wanna pop, so I'm sending faggots to hell and a devil red drop. Trying to cop more than before in two or fifty states with one pair of clothes in a digital plate. These niggas talking like they cake, really baking the oven, and when you put them on the spot, they look at you like you bugging. I'm like, fuck them, they hate a nigga loving his life. No one's giving the opportunity, they plugging my wife. Niggas the shite when you let them be, especially the bum type. Twist L's with you one day, plotting the next night. It's alright, cause I can make a call on the cell and you have niggas in your crib like meth did in belly. My Peruvian will see you scheming. I see him. I see him. Yo. Like when they spot you, they got you. Your vision be so blurry, but I stay a kuna matata, meaning with no worries. Through a thunderstorm, heat wave, a snow flurry. We overcome pain and defeat with no hurry. Can't sit pretty with no gain of victory. So we hang like old titties and bang if necessary. It's a frontline thing, you lame. Ain't got that through yet. Slash, spitting slugs, slash, we ain't got the cool shit. We still the illest faculty without this music. And still the nuts as youths, we gotta do this. Cause when bars and murder get on it, it's like a collage. The burners be flow harder than all of you burgers Regardless of this hardship that we harbor We all earnest And it's that before this honor So hard enough you're not learning You're sitting with time's turning And I see it Shh, And we back We just heard music from my man Curry Lills Exclusive And my Block Friends and Cousins that left out of fucking Brownsville and went to Virginia and never fucking come back. They went down there slinging. They ain't never fucking come back nine five and we always kept you know always kept in contact. They always send me their music. Shout out to you know Peanut, Chris Rock looking motherfucker, and um, Yo Q and uh, T J. Uh, you know thanks for the music. You know what? Um, it's a it's, this is my last um stretch. You know right now on the show and shit. You know, you know, it's like um, it's 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 the um, the knife ending, and I'm the home fucking team, and um, score is um, let me see um, four one, no, four one, and the bases is loaded, and I'm up to bat, and I'm about to slap this motherfucker out of the the BX or maybe Shea Stadium or maybe fucking Coney Island, um, you know that stadium over there. I'm gonna send a shout out to all. The Negroes and the Jews that um, formed up these record companies. And I think that hip hop probably would not have gone far as the way that it did if the big corporations would have been the ones signing the acts. And the production companies didn't try to uh, bring their brand to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? Like you seeing the Def Jam label. You see in the Uptown label. You see in the Cold Chilling label. You see in the Bad Boy label. You see in the Death Row label. You see in the Rap A Lot label, Suave House, LaFace Record, all the way to Rough Rider and The Rock. And every purse, every fucking company that I just named here on this piece of paper. If you was to press up a shirt or jacket or have a leather jacket made and they see that symbol, I'm, I'm not going to mean, I mean, you got to be really hip hop for Suave House, but definitely rap a lot because when you look at rap a lot, you're going to say the Ghetto Boys and Mr. Scarface. My mom's playing. If you are a certain age and you see a motherfucker with a rap a lot symbol on his chest, you're going to have a thought of Bushwick. Excuse me, you're going to have a thought of Bushwick Bill, Willie D, Scarface, and Prince J. You, if you're old enough to know, my mind's playing tricks on me is going to come to your brain. All right, all right. now, if you was to see the Def Jam symbol with, the, with that record there, shout out to Russell Simmons for taking hip hop this far because without you, like I said, the corporations would have had their hands on hip hop and it just... It just wouldn't have moved the way it just wouldn't have moved the way that it did. So we're gonna send a shout out to after Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin got that managerial money from Run DMC, they took that money and they created Def Jam and the first act signed is L Cool J, but some say it was Chuck D and Public Enemy. So I'm gonna give a shout out to Chuck D. 
L Cool J. I'm gonna run it down. I, I gotta run this shit down the line. Chuck D, L Cool J, EPMD, Redman, Warren G. You heard what I said, East Coast people? Warren G is the one that got Def Jam out of fucking bankruptcy. And it's like it kind of bugged me out. Either Russell Simmons was spinning big because it's like, how the fuck is Def Jam near bankruptcy with Public Enemy selling albums? Fear of the Black Planet, Takes the Nations of Millions, Apocalypse 91. All those shits was platinum albums. L. Cool J's albums, that's like four platinum albums except for that. What was that shit? 19 Shots to the Dome that had pink. Pink, pink something in a plastic bag. That was the only L album that sold like 500, 500,000. And he came back with that shit with Who Do You Love when Puff Daddy had, you know, kind of brought him back um, back out. Um, like I said, Warren G, Method Man. When Def Jam came with that year of the man, I remember I was living in the Bronx and the Source Magazine had that promotion in there. The year of the man. Red Man, Method Man. Mm, now we are coming to DMX And I always go to the X I'm going to go to Ja Rule You know what I'm saying Murder Inc. Incorporated y Murder Inc. Y'all did y'all thing And Rockefeller Y'all did y'all thing No doubt Jay-Z You went on Like I said You're a billionaire But I always go back to DMX Rather he's smoking crack Snorting cocaine You're going to Always remember Get at me dogs if Biggie Smalls did not go to Los Angeles, if Biggie Smalls would have stayed in his fucking army jacket, no disrespect, I don't want nobody coming at me if you do see this podcast on Fulton Street, if Biggie Smalls would have stayed in his army jacket and not that fucking Versace shirt and got too laxed and stayed in that Brooklyn element, DMX still would have came out with get, get At Me Dogs. I don't give a fuck if Life After Death, how many singles. It was 24 songs on Life After Death. And every one of those fucking songs, Puff Daddy could have released those songs as singles. He could have really milked the shit out of Life After Death. That's, son, how many different producers he had on it. The RZA even did Long Kiss Goodnight. Killed it. I just think that DMX would have still made... He, DMX would have made his mark. That's just about it. I'm going to jump to Uptown Records. Um, Andre Harrell with Heavy D. Andre Harrell with Mary J. Blige. Andre Harrell with Jodeci. Andre Harrell with the fucking Lost Boys. Now, the Lost Boys came in the mix when Puff was still... Father MC, I'm sorry, baby. All I need is a one-night stand. I'll be, I'm not going to forget you, Father MC. And, and Jeff Red, I found love in which that shit was done over twice. I'll be sure. Damn, forgot about you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to shout out to I'll be sure. Until that, I remember that cold winter night, about 1988, 1989, and everybody went in the house before they went to the reggae party. Which my fat ass wasn't going to the reggae party anyway. I had my sandwich that I had got from the store, and I'm going in the house to look at Showtime at the Apollo, and I'll be sure got booed at the Apollo. Cause people found out that he really, really, really couldn't sing. He looked it cool with the um, with that flat shop, that flat top, and that um, that Stonewall suit that you had on, bro. At that time, that was the um, the style. So shout out to Uptown Records. I'm gonna go. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip down the cold, chilling with Biz Markie and Big Daddy Kane and Coogee Rap, which I think that Coogee Rap court. I I said this shit. Uh, maybe the last podcast I was here. Coogee cool Rap got the bad end of the stick that Coogee cool Rap was too far ahead of his time in New York. I think if Coogee cool Rap was on Ruthless, I think that Coogee cool Rap would have made it if, if, if some kind of way they would have lied and said Coogee cool Rap was from the West Coast. Coogee cool Rap would have popped off because his, his gangster rap in New York, it just... New York was still stuck on sucker MCs, and I guess also the um the Black Power movement going on with the Native Tongues was out, and just just that certain people just couldn't get to Coogee Rap other than the hustlers or other than the gun busters and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, Biz Markie, Big Daddy Kane, uh, Cool V, um, and 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 Coogee Rap and the Master Ace. You know, and a couple, you know, a couple of um. 
the jizzard was there. The jizzard was on cold chilling. He was mad that um, the, the the he he had some wax song, you know, wax album or wax song. Cause I remember, like I said, I remember that coming out of high school. I remember when the jizzard came out with the album. And also, I seen that on that Wu Tang um, that Wu Tang shit that they had on um Showtime. Bad boy. Puff Daddy promotes a promotes a party, and these people get killed at that college on 100 CCNY on 137th Street and those people got killed and everybody wanted to sue Puff Daddy and they had to separate themselves from um, Puff Daddy at that time and he comes back with Bad Boy Entertainment you know right, right around that time on um, what was that the, the Who's the Man soundtrack he was helped putting that soundtrack together and that's when we first heard Biggie Smalls with Party and Bullshit so and he came back hard with Mary J. Blige, like I said, that What's the 411 album, that shit was fucking hard. That shit was hard. At that time of actually having an actual release, an actual release of a Ron G album. Ron G was the mixtape king in New York City, but you got, she's singing over break beats. That shit just wasn't happening. And, you know, and at that time, corporations wasn't really so much into the publishing the way that they are now because you're not sampling shit if that song did good son if you don't got a million dollars they coming at you with some kind of whatever how the way that point spread shit go whatever you'll get the money for doing performances because the the corporations done took over you know the hip-hop sample so shout out to bad boy for the remix you know what i'm saying the year the nine five and putting out those good remixes and i'm gonna jump to death row and a lot of people always say your son like yo suge knight is dead it's not so much it's not so much about you know the bad shit that suge knight did it's the, it's the important shit that suge knight did you know damn but he jerked snoop doggy dog now everybody know what publishing is everybody today like, like i was listening to fat joe and fat joe saying that you know i control my masters nobody wouldn't know nothing about no fucking master recording the only person that knew about a master of recording was fucking what, what was his name? Um, what's his fucking name? Ray Charles. If you ever look at that movie Ray, you'll see him rocking to the side saying that can I own my own masters? He said that there's no black people that own their masters. The master of recording is how the way that you could keep repressing the song and how much you want to get when that shit getting get perfect. How much do you get today by streaming? That's owning your master. Either you're going to get the whole dollar or you're going to get 0 .01. Rap a lot. Like I said, shout out to Rest in Peace to Bushwick Bill. Um, My mom's playing tricks on me and the good music that came out of the Fifth Ward of um Texas. Swab House, I want to say right quick, you know what I'm saying, for 8-Ball and MJG. They, they did their own flavor because they was pushing records independently and those motherfuckers was pushing 400, 500,000 records at that time and this thing independently. Or I think they was, they was getting a little distribution for Revitivity, but in my day, CDs, I'm 46. CDs was twenty four ninety nine in certain stores. You still do the math. People were still making a profit off of just selling four hundred thousand CDs at the time. The Face Records. Shout out to um, L.A. Reid, which you know at one time ran Def Jam and all that, and and Babyface when they formed the Face Records. That's TLC. That's Tony Braxton, and that's the fucking Goody Mob. And I love the shit out of the Goody Mob. All the way, we're gonna jump to the Rough Rider, like I said, to DMX and um, the Locks. And Eve for doing a, you know what I'm saying, doing anything and making a mark all the way to Jay Z. And I'm gonna say, I love you, Jay Z. I'm gonna I'm wrap this show up. I love you, Jay Z, the rapper. And you just wouldn't have made it if Dame Dash didn't have that Harlem hustle to bring that shit out. But it just was his arrogance that just kind of fucked it up where you knew, like, Nigga, you ain't gonna fuck up my money and shit like that. So I'm gonna, what, what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna finish this shit out with a song. Let me find what song I want to finish this shit out. Let me find something because you know what I'm saying. You can't leave no air space, no air room on it. But when there was earth to plow or guns to bear, I was always there, right on the job. You are now tuned into Bossman Tapis. You are now tuned into Bossman.
Hustlers in the robbers, gang squad be mobbing. What's gonna get niggas hoggers? Revolvers, problem solvers. All my verses is punch and tarver. All my money in the big car. More cakes than Carvel. More rides than the carnival. On my own time, we don't follow us. We the movement, we don't follow crews. I'm cool with you, but I don't fuck with you. That's your boots, and I the fuck with you, and all these rubbers. A baby father sucker, heard he play at the rough. We on the road like a trucker, moving old like a juggler. Dog, I touch bread like mustard. Catch up, my shit jam suckers, run the ruckus. You a mumble rapper, then it's fucking boots in your face. Eat my chuckers. Street lovers, side block, sure shot, lost and think something walker. Situation to get walker, fuck a splitter, nigga. We jumpin' out and talk a hardest niggas in New York, come from Brownsville or Yonkers. When there was earth to plow, all guns to bear, I was always there, right on the job. Dots, hoes, hookers, baggers, cutters, lookers, shooters, pushers, cookers, bell off from the bookers, getting hair from a cougar, I'm up before the roosters, money.